Hello, my friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit envelop you and guide you, inspire you, and make you understand His Holy Word so that then you may be able to obey and follow His Word and enjoy its benefits and, and rights, the rights of His promises. We have been speaking about forgiveness. We are talking a lot about it. Forgiveness, true forgiveness, God's forgiveness, is something that only He can give because we are all sinners, all sinners. We were all born in sin. We were generated in sin. We are the fruit of sin because we came from the race, the race of sin after Adam and Eve sinned which means that we are all sinners, all of us. However, what happens? Only God, only God and God alone has the authority, the power to forgive because only He is perfect. Only He is perfect and holy and holy, holy. Only He is the most high, eternal God, and only He is most high. And due to this biblical understanding, only He has authority to forgive. However, He also gives us... How nice is that? He also gives us the power, the power to forgive. That's it. He is the authority, the highest authority of forgiveness. And He gives from His authority to forgive the privilege so that we are also able to forgive one another. If we forgive, then He says there in heaven, Amen. If we don't forgive, then He says, Look, you cannot be forgiven either, because the greatest forgiveness is my own, and I give it to you, so why don't you give it? Why don't you forgive your debtors? So that's how it is. You have to understand it, dear friend. If you do not want to forgive, you have authority not to do so. Oh, okay, I don't want to forgive. Fine, no problem. But you are not going to receive forgiveness. And if you don't receive forgiveness, you have no right to receive anything from God. Nothing. It's pointless to get the Bible and read and say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is a lie. Everything you lack, you shall want everything. Especially peace. Because peace is only possible with forgiveness. If there is no forgiveness, there is no peace. There is no peace. And you know that. I know that. When we don't forgive, then our conscience is there throbbing, accusing, bothering us at all times. Our soul is accused. But when we are forgiven, then immediately our soul finds peace. It enters into a state of peace. Why? Because of forgiveness. So if you don't want to forgive, it's fine. Not really fine. But if you don't want to forgive, okay, but you are not going to be forgiven. You are not going to be forgiven. That's the reality. And perhaps the person that you cannot forgive, that person will repent from their sins and find God's forgiveness, and you who can't forgive will be left behind. 
you are going to go to hell because of the fact that you don't want to forgive. That's the reality. I will be very straightforward here to make sure that people understand. That's the reality. Those who forgive are forgiven and have the privilege to inherit eternal life. Those who can't forgive are not forgiven and have the disgraceful destination of dying and going straight to hell because they denied forgiveness to others. I already said that here, and I will mention this example, this sad example, a sad example here, but it will illustrate really well, it will clarify and show people what it means because Jesus came into this world to forgive, to give us the right of being forgiven. Jesus came into the world to save, but salvation only comes through forgiveness. If there is no forgiveness, there is no salvation. The thief on the cross, let's say the good thief, said, Lord, remember me. And just because he manifested, expressed faith in the Lord Jesus, Jesus said, today still you are going to be with me in paradise. So let me tell you the sad story, the sad testimony of this assistant. We had an assistant who was doing a special work, holding meetings in this special work. He was very dedicated. He was giving his life for the sheep under his care. But the assistant was already getting old. And obviously, due to his age, he had a health problem and needed to be taken care of. So he was hospitalized and the other assistants, colleagues and members from his branch would come to visit him at the hospital. However, just because he found out that somebody else, another assistant, started to do the special work and was now looking after the souls in the special work, he got offended with that assistant, who had nothing to do with the situation. He was just obeying. He was chosen to go and look after the special work and he obeyed. But that assistant was really hurt, but really hurt. And until the day of his death, he denied to forgive that other assistant who had no fault at all to be a victim of, of that assistant who had a resentment towards him. And the assistant died with that resentment of not being able to forgive. He did not want to forgive the person who replaced him. And this is very serious. And it happens a lot in the world. What happens the most in this world is this hatred. It's selfishness, self-centeredness. People that want to be lords, they do not want to be servants. They do not want to serve. They want to be lords. And when somebody gets in their way, then they get resentful, grudgeful, and everything that usually happens. So, if you do not learn to forgive, then you won't learn how to be forgiven. If you can't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And forgiveness, it's an authority, it's a power from God. It's God's authority to you that you may forgive others. God gave you and I, all of us, the authority, His power to forgive. And we have to forgive. If we do not obey the voice of our Lord by not forgiving, then we can't be forgiven either. That's how it works. It's give and take, my dear friend. You have to understand this. God 
speaks through the prophet Ezekiel that if the person lives in holiness, walks in righteousness the entire life and in the last moment they commit an iniquity, they will be condemned. Whereas the other person who lived in sin the entire life, but in the last moment they repent, they will be forgiven. That's how it is. That's how it is. If you forgive, you are forgiven. If you don't forgive, you are not forgiven. By God, I'm speaking about God. That's the reality. The person doesn't even have to ask you for forgiveness. You have to naturally forgive them as many times as necessary. And there is more. Let me tell you something that it, it's very interesting, very important for you to know in order for you not to forget about the importance of obedience to God. Obedience to the Word of God is a matter of intelligence and, and reasoning and rationalizing. You decide it here in your mind whether or not you are going to forgive. It doesn't depend on feelings. If God, if God demanded from us forgiveness towards somebody else based on our feelings and heart, he knows that this is impossible. How am I going to feel in order to forgive? I am not going to feel in order to forgive. I have to obey. And this is it. Those who obey, they will reap the benefits of obedience. So you have to understand, dear friend, that it's not a matter of whether or not you feel like it in your heart, the desire to forgive. No, it's obedience. But Bishop, then explain to me how I can forgive. I already taught you many times, but I will repeat it. When, for example, when I as well was attacked by a feeling, a resentment against a certain person, so I, I was angry, my heart was closed, my heart was closed up, and the Holy Spirit started to tell me, listen, you have to forgive, he was demanding that from me, and I was enraged and angry and disappointed, and I didn't want to forgive, however, However, the Holy Spirit convinced me that I truly had to forgive. So what did I do? I prayed for that person. That was all. I said, oh my God, you know, my heart does not want to forgive. I don't feel like forgiving. Not at all. Not at all. On the opposite, I, my heart wants that person to die and the news to spread around and I'll be the first one to hear about their death. However, in obedience to your word, I forgive that person. I pray for them. I pray that you may bless their life. It doesn't matter if I feel like it or not. I want and I decide. I use the right to forgive. And in my mind here, I pray that you may bless that person. When I did that, that was it. I was set free from that resentment. And I want that person to do well in life. I don't wish evil on anybody. I want everyone to do well. Everyone, everyone, even those who hate me. Why? Because I'm not dumb. Only if I were dumb, then I would feed a resentment against any person out there. But we forgive because we are all human beings and we are all obviously subject to this sort of problem. But God gives us the escape, the power, the right, the authority to forgive. If we forgive, then we are forgiven as well, because we also fail, don't we? So how am I not going to forgive something silly and we want to be forgiven from something serious that I've done. It's not possible. 
Therefore, God gives me the power, the authority to pray and forgive those who hurt me. And I forgive them always. I pray for them. I pray for them. And I ask God that you may understand this and obey in order for you to be led to the green pastures. That's true. If you say like this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, then you have to know the following. The Lord is your shepherd, but if you don't listen to his voice, if you don't obey his voice, then you are not a sheep from his flock. Then he is not going to lead you to the green pastures because you don't listen. You are rebellious, you are disobedient, so you are not going to go to the green pastures. It's pointless for you to mention the word of God as many times as you want. It's not going to work. In practice, it's something else, dear friend. Jesus said, My sheep, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep hear my voice and follow me which means that they obey me. If I am a sheep of the Lord's flock, then I will obey his voice. I will forgive. Even if the person is wrong, they failed me, they were the ones who were unfair with me, even if I am right, still I have to forgive. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the circumstances. What matters is the following. If I obey, I am deserving of what God has promised. If I obey, then I am blessed. I'm forgiven. And if I don't obey, then I'm not forgiven. That's the truth. The truth everyone has to know. You who are watching me right now, perhaps you are in a prison cell and you carry a grudge against your father, your mother, whoever, someone who did evil towards you, and because of that, you are there in prison now. And you are full of hatred, waiting for the moment to leave prison to seek revenge. Pay attention. It's pointless for you to seek revenge. If you want to keep this feeling of hatred, because if you seek revenge, Another situation is going to happen and you are going to be subject to the same situation again and you seek revenge again and you won't be able to seek revenge on everyone. So be intelligent, use your mind. If you can forgive, even if you don't feel like forgiving, but pray for that person. Say, oh Lord, I forgive so and so. That's all, just confess because this word of yours is powerful before God. God understands you. He knows that in your heart it's not possible for us to forgive. We don't have control of the heart, but we control our minds. We can say no, I accept or I don't accept, I want or I don't want, I forgive or I don't forgive. If I forgive, then obviously God will forgive me. Do that, because if you don't do it, you will not have peace. As long as you don't forgive, you will not have peace. You won't have it. That's the truth. Because when there is forgiveness, there is peace. When there is no forgiveness, there is no peace. And those who are wise and intelligent, they practice what God teaches. Isn't it? Those who think they obey. Those who don't think will perish. That's the reality. You depend on yourself. It's pointless for you to be faithful to the church, do everything right according to the book. But if you keep a resentment within you, then this resentment shows that you are not a servant of God. You serve Satan who is rebellious, and he was the first one to rebel against God, who is the father of lies, the father of sin, the father of rebellion. He's the father of hatred, the father of vengeance. So when the person does not obey God, they obey the devil. When they disobey the devil, they obey God. That's it. You are the one who decide your eternal destination. Okay? And Today we have that very special meeting, the meeting for the souls 
And by the way, there is a very interesting video, a very interesting video that you have to watch today in the Universal Churches, okay? And on the 25th of June, we start the fast of Daniel, the fast of information and entertainment of everything that is worldly. We are going to make a cleansing, a cleansing in our mind, remove everything that is not good, forget everything that we we allowed into our minds and leave our minds clean in order to receive the Holy Spirit. 21 days sacrificing information, entertainment, social media, shopping and this and that and the other. If you want, no one is forced to do it. Each one will do as they want. We bring the the purpose, the inspiration. Those who want, they will do it. Those who don't, then they won't. But besides the sacrifice of the fast of information, you are also going to have to do good to the person next to you, which is the second greatest commandment. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. What you don't want, what you don't want for yourself, you shouldn't want for your neighbor. You should want for your neighbor what you want for yourself, meaning that you are going to benefit your neighbor. And when you benefit them with a hug, with a word of love, with a word of understanding or with forgiveness, for example, when you lower the tone of your voice to speak to that person that you don't really get along with, you don't really get along with that person that is near you, they work with you, next to you, then you are going to lower the tone of your voice and say, good morning, God bless you, and things of this nature. And then you are going to also be benefited by this. So we are going to do the fast of Daniel alongside this extra sacrifice. So it's going to be double the sacrifice we are going to make. It's a sacrifice of information and so on, as well as the sacrifice of wanting the best for our neighbor. Okay? We are going to be speaking more about this during the week. May God bless you all and see you tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen.